You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is David Smith, Senior Analyst for The Morgan Report, which you can find online at silver-investor.com. Welcome to the show, David. Hi, Jim. Today we're going to talk about a little advice from the Aiden sisters and David Morgan about how you two can have a golden touch. Jim, I read a lot of different newsletters and I subscribe to a number of them and a lot more I read what comes out in the public domain from time to time. And uh, I have always uh, had a lot of respect for the Aiden sisters. They've been around since the, the last bull market eve, actually. And it's uh, they are Pamela and Ann Aiden, who uh, they publish a newsletter out of Costa Rica. And uh, they are followers of the Elliott Wave. And they now talk about how we're in the D Wave, which is the largest decline of the different five wave patterns that uh, Elliott Wavers uh, watch transpire. And so uh, we're seeing this big decline in gold uh, that's been going on for some time and is, is nearing the end. Uh, in probably in time and in price. And uh, I like the fact that they are really calm about things. They uh, don't uh, have massive complexities in their analysis. And they tend to look at the big picture, and they tend to be really correct over time. And I think of how uh, when I read them, it helps me remain calm in the markets, just like it does when I listen to or read what David Morgan has stated. And, of course, as you know, I've been working with David for a long time and write for his newsletter and things like this. And uh, he made a comment here just recently that I thought would really give people optimism uh, going through this uh, wear em out scare em out phase that we've been in for several years. And he said, I truly believe that when things unravel further, that the rush to silver and gold is going to be so spectacular that their value will exceed what their historic value has been by a great margin, in fact. And I think that day is probably not that far away. And so here's the thing. It's we know that none of the problems have really been addressed uh, globally or uh, domestically. Things keep getting papered over, more layers of paper promises over uh, reality. We have a lot of people that are waking up, so to speak, under the radar, and they're buying massive amounts of American silver eagles, of uh, Canadian maple leaves and gold and silver, the same with the American gold eagles. And um, this is going to completely, one of these days, is just going to fall apart and it'll be obvious to everybody that the emperor has no clothes. And if you wait until that day to do something, then you're just going to be standing around empty-handed. And by the same token, if you go too deeply into a position and you're way early, then it's really hard to hang on. So it's all about balance, in my view, Jim. I've uh, taken a look at some information that the Financial Post has. They say there's a reason you should be uh, strong on gold. For example, uh, the Chinese... Uh, New Year is coming up, and also India's wedding season. Are those big impacts when you're looking at the price of gold? I think they really are, and that's the the thing that I've been saying the last six months or so, is that we have all these problems still with us that haven't been solved, but we also have an additional motivator in terms of people holding gold and silver, and that is the rising income uh, abilities in in the Far East for people to purchase these things, not just as as crisis hedges, but also for gifts and for adding to their uh, wealth in terms of a physical monetary reality rather than the paper, relying totally on paper, which historically has always gone the way of uh, of zero eventually, and that's where all paper currencies have declined to. So I think what you just mentioned is just more supportive uh, uh, evidence that uh, accumulation continues, and at some point the physical offtake is going to break the back of the paper uh, overlays that we've seen with these different derivatives and whatnot, and I think it could really happen with a very large bang. But right now, all these things are working toward that day, and so if people just are conservative about what they do and they follow these uh, things that are being very bullish, but at the same time they don't overcommit at any given time on their position, I think they'll be well served and they'll be ready to take advantage and have the flexibility, however things develop going forward. David, you said it's pretty important for people to still keep an eye on the technicals and don't let your emotions start to rule your trades. I think holding, uh, first of all, controlling your emotions and keeping yourself as calm as possible with the give and take of the markets, no matter how violent they become, I think this is absolutely critical. Because if you are panicked and you don't turn that energy into productive uh, um, motions rather than than fear, then you're either going to not do anything, you're going to freeze in the headlights, so to speak, or you're going to do the wrong thing because your emotions are driving your rationality. 
And that's what I like about the Aiden sisters and David Morgan and a few other analysts that they help uh, us and they help me to keep relatively calm so that I can make decisions that are in my best interest after I've done the research and, and do it in a conservative way. And so I think if people, first of all, they have to control their emotions and then they have to go against their emotions in declines like we're seeing now because the tendency is to not want to do anything. And so if you don't have the position you want or as much as you want, I think, first of all, doing the uh, research and buying management who's done it before, looking at realities, not stories, um, and going especially buying in thirds, which you and I have talked about a lot, and I think this really can help anybody. First of all, you're looking to buy three tranches of a uh, stock that you'd like to hold. And in times like this where there's so much volatility and unknown, what I like to do is if I'm going to buy that first third, sometimes I'll buy one half of the third amount that I was going to get. So if I was going to buy 300 shares to start with of a, of a company, I'm buying it into a decline ideally, I'd buy 150 shares, and then I'd look to buy the other 150 if it declined even further. And so... The, the odds are very good that you'll get two-thirds of what you want. And even if you only get one-third and it runs away, like one stock that I had last week I bought, it doubled in about a week, and I hadn't gotten a chance to buy the second third. It wasn't filled. But I didn't feel bad because I had a position. We always want more when it's going our way, but when it declines, we want less. So I let that go, and I felt totally relaxed, even though I only had one-third of what I want. And I think the chances are it'll decline enough that I'll be able to get another third. And then you have that final third, which some people call uh, waiting for stupid cheap prices. And you may or may not get that filled, but if prices really decline sharply, which some people think they still could do over the next few weeks going into the end of the year with tax uh, loss selling, you have a chance to pick up stocks that you know are going to be around and you've done the research at a price that maybe is 20, 30, 40 percent less than they are even today as far as they've declined. We may not get that chance because they may not decline. But if they do, you'll have some money to do it. And here's another thing, Jim, and I've never voiced this before, but I think it's important to consider. Let's say you never get a chance to deploy that last one-third, and the market takes off, and at some point it really proves to everybody that we are in a new sustained uptrend with higher highs, higher lows, uh, you know, the 50-day crossing over the 200 moving av day average and all of that, and you still got this money that you never got a chance to deploy at stupid cheap prices. Well, when you're very, very certain that this new uptrend is solid and is going to last, you can still go in, if you choose, and spend most of that money buying shares that are much higher than they, you could have gotten before, but at the same point, they've proven themselves. And even if a stock has doubled or tripled from where we are today, many of these quality stocks uh, would have to go up seven or eight times to get back to where they were four years ago. So you've still got a lot of profit potential ahead of you behaving in that manner. David, thanks a lot for chatting with us. You bet, Jim. It's been great. Take care. My guest has been David Smith, Senior Analyst for The Morgan Report, which you can find online at silver-investor.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Comments about the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. And if you have a question for a guest, don't forget, you can also send that in to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.